Hi, we're Kahoot. We're on a mission to make learning awesome. Our game-based learning platform is used by millions of people all over the All righty, guys, for those that are my seasoned veterans, um, please feel free to start logging in. So today, one of the things that you'll see is one of our new features called characters. I just toggled it on. Um, so you'll, you'll see that when you're logging in into our session today, you will be able to uh, choose your own little kind of um, character and avatar to represent you in our session today. So please start logging in. If you're new to the platform and or our webinars, we tend to have interactive webinars uh, where you actually join a Kahoot and we all play it together. Uh, a couple of ways that you can join. If you're a seasoned vet, you know this. You can scan the QR code that's up on screen now, or you can also navigate to your mobile browser and input the game pin that you're seeing on screen. I will say, keep in mind, if you are hosting from, or I'm sorry, if you are joining from your mobile browser, uh, it may time you out if your phone idles, locks, goes to sleep. So just be prepared for that. However, it, although it is a very convenient way to join for future reference, downloading the Kahoot app does not um, trigger that kind of scenario. So for future case, um, have the Kahoot app downloaded and you can, you know, let your phone idle, put it to the side uh, and not be momentarily disconnected from the session. But if that does happen today, that is why it's happening. Keep that in mind. So I see everybody's picking their avatars, some fun little um, characters here on screen are definitely coming through. So I'll keep giving a chance for everybody to join and then we'll get started. Anywhere. We call them Kahoots. It works for any subject, in any language, on any device. You can also discover and play existing games. There are millions of Kahoots in our library. Kahoot can be played in a live setting learning awesome our game so amazing we have 19 folks in which is a really good number there's 29 or rather actually 27 people in the session i'll give it about 30 more seconds to get in into our um, interactive session today and once again today's spotlight is going to be showcasing our new characters feature that you guys are seeing here as well as talking about some best practices on how to kind of you know, make your path to creating your cahoots a bit more efficient. We have a couple of options that we can showcase for you today. So be prepared to see some fun stuff. But yeah, okay. We have 22 people in or 21 people in already. And as you can see, look at all these wonderful little avatars showing up here. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. You're also seeing our space theme being used in the background. Uh, I was going to use the Halloween one, but I thought it, you know, inappropriate it's past you know it's uh, whatever we need to to go about um but yeah welcome to kahoot 101 everybody our ongoing webinar series hosted by your customer success team in this case today my name is galilea and i'm joined by my colleague zena but before we make some formal introductions uh, the question today is going to be to open us up with what is the most exciting thing you've done in 2022 or exciting thing you want to do in 2022 it's almost coming to a close, so I'm sure there's been a lot of fun stuff been done. There's been a lot of maybe things that are coming up in the last couple of months in the year. So please feel free to type away. And for those that are my newer people, uh, the question type that this is, is called a word cloud. Uh, it could be used for numerous reasons, but uh, namely, personally, we love to use it as kind of an icebreaker type of question. It creates this very nice visual that you're seeing on screen. As you can see, we have the bubble in the middle, started a new job, uh, be larger than all the other ones, meaning a lot of um, most of the people in this room submitted that that answer. 
and um, it's dynamic. It changes with the answers from the group. So it's a, a quick way to give the audience a way to represent themselves. And in this case, uh, congratulations to all of you that did start a new job in 2022. I hope it's going well and that you're enjoying it. But to read out some of the notable shout outs out here, uh, we have Manatee Swim, National Park Tour, uh, win the Powerball. I would love to, to know more about that. That sounds amazing. I hope that it uh, it was awesome <laughs> and that you're, you're thriving and living your best life. But we have a lot of travel, scuba diving, getting married. Congratulations. Um, but yeah, this question type can also be used for other reasons like sparking discussion in a live session or even gathering feedback in an asynchronous one. Um, more on that in a bit, but yeah, thank you for sharing. So now truly the official introduction. My name is Galilea and I am the customer success manager uh, on the Kahoot side, joined alongside my colleague, Zainab, who is also a customer success manager. Zainab, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Zainab. And as Gally mentioned, I'm her partner in crime in the customer success team. I will be manning the chat today. So if you have questions, thoughts, ideas, please feel free to throw them in there. Thank you, Z. Um, but yeah, she'll be the handy woman on the chat. Please feel free to share thoughts, ideas, and as she said, questions. But moving right along, we're jumping straight into a poll type question. How well do you know Kahoot? Some of you may be recurring uh, buddies of ours that come show up every other week and we appreciate you and adore you. And some of you may be starting just barely on your Kahoot journey, but we would love to know who is joining us today. So just select what applies to you. All righty. So it seems like the majority of today um is actually a bit more of our seasoned crowd which i think you'll really like some of the best practices that we cover we also have some some uh individuals who've never seen kahoot before so you're in good hands today you're going to learn a lot of advanced tactics you're going to be able to you know um, bounce ideas off of your peers in in this uh group today that are a bit more seasoned so please feel free to leverage um everything and the resources at hand but Yep. For those that are my newbies here, you might be unfamiliar with the poll type question. Um, as you can see, it has a point, not sorry, excuse me. It has percentages that it displays for you in real time. Um, and it could be a great way to get a feel for the room uh, in a very specific type of way. So poll type question can be useful in those live sessions when you're looking to kind of pinpoint certain um, insights about your audience. But now another word cloud, in this case, asking um, differently, just what is your role in your organization? We would love to see uh, the different types and walks of life that are joining us today. Um, it helps us gear also our examples, just tailor them a bit more in real time. But yeah, please feel free to share your roles. Alrighty, some answers came through and let's see what we have. A lot of training and development, learning, learning and development, sales enablement, that's good to see, service desk lead, consultants, supervisor member. I, I believe it cut out there, word cloud, I will say as an asterisk does have a character limit of 20, 20 characters. Keep that in mind. And then um, training manager, leaders, executive assistants. So definitely a good mix in the room, but no surprise here. The largest demographic represented today are trainers. So um, hopefully we can leave you with some, some valuable insights. But okay, these are just some uh, high-level overview numbers on where we stand as Kahoot today. These are actually just a tad outdated because we have actually hit new milestones. But as you can see here, um, some of these numbers just display our accessibility that we have across the globe. Namely, some of the ones that we're most proud of currently is the fact that we have, I believe the it says 6 billion players since launch. I believe that actually has gone up to 8 billion players, if not higher. Um, but it's something that we're really proud of because it means that 
the power of Kahoot is showcasing itself and, you know, providing value for you all. Also, another one is that we uh, are used and, and um, played in over, you know, 200 countries, which can be really, really fun and something that applies specifically to the people in this group. Uh, 97% of the Fortune 500 companies uh, are actually using Kahoot, whether that's for trainings, for live events, for remote accessibility, team building, culture expansion. There's a lot of different use cases, which um, is really, really useful and, and nice for us to see that um, we have value for you all. So thank you for uh, always preaching the gospel of Kahoot. But now diving straight into relevant information for you, in the form of a brainstorm question, how are you using Kahoot with your team? So I would love you now to share um, the ideas slash the actual use cases that you are doing internally with your teams. And then we can all vote on it as a group in a second to see which ideas we like um, the most. So um, yeah, please submit away now uh, your ways that you're using Kahoot. Now, brainstorm, I will say, is a really fun, useful question uh, because you can use it in a capacity like today to learn about your audience and then have kind of like a um, uh, audience generated vote session. Or you can also use it more on the brainstorm end of things where you're looking to mine insights in real time and uh, really kind of have a, like a collaborative approach to solving an issue. And this is a great way to do it. You get to submit your ideas. There is kind of like a tactile component that you'll see in a second. The question type itself uses uh, smart technology to like pre-read and pre-screen your answers and then color code them accordingly so that it could group them further together. And then once the voting round starts, you the power is kind of given back to you as the audience to be able to kind of um, represent yourselves and in, in what you find is adding the most value. So in this case, it's going to be reading through all your wonderful ways that you're using Kahoot or maybe intending to use Kahoot for my newbies today. Um, and Let's see what, what comes undone, but about 24 seconds left on the timer. I'll give everybody the last couple of seconds to kind of cross your T's and dot your I's, and then we'll start our review and then our voting round. I'm excited to see what we uncover from this question. All righty, so timer is up. And let's see what ideas came through. So it's sorting everything for us. It's thinking and now, fantastic. Okay, so it seems like we have a couple of similar ideas. So as you can see, starting off on the far left-hand side, we have training, training classes. We integrated into our training sessions. So I'm gonna group all of these training um, ideas since it's very similar in nature. Um, together. And we can put also fun games to break up training in that training group. Um, a couple of you saying not using it yet, have not used it yet, not used yet. We'll put these all together. Uh, fun and facts, fun. Get to know each other's good one. So we have development, culture expansion, trends, new worker training, new hire training. These both go together um icebreakers train on policy topics i'm actually going to drag this train on policy topics over here to the training group team building team engagement definitely go together uh training new technicians i'm also going to put in our training group knowledge checks feedback i'd like to use it for team engagement during meetings we're definitely going to put you in the engagement group over here Encourage participation in live meetings, which also to me sounds like maximizing engagement, Pre uh, prevention presentations with students, staff, healthcare, staff, and parents. I love that because I feel like a lot of people do like to use it for training, but maybe are only using the um, knowledge check aspect of it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But Kahoot does have a very extensive toolkit to help you um make your training sessions and actual meetings interactive by allowing you to embed, you know, um, 
uh, slides and PDFs directly into the platform Kahoot and then just gamify it with some of the questions afterwards. That's one of my favorite ways to use it. So we have icebreakers, get to know the team. I'm going to put these two together. Feedback, I'm actually going to leave alone because I feel like feedback it's a great way to use Kahoot, and it doesn't, at least to me, fit in any of these categories. Uh, get to know each other. It's going to be put over here in Icebreakers, Daily Games for Global Integrity, Integrity Week Celebration. I love that. I feel like that's a unique one for sure. And then Trends, Culture Expansion and Development, I love also. So I'm going to leave those all separately. So now that we've grouped um, similar ones, we've aligned on which ones you can vote for. I'm going to start the voting round on your devices now. You'll be able to give a star to the idea group or idea you want to vote for, or you're going to be able to withhold a star and skip the idea if you don't want to vote for that. So I'm going to start that now, and please feel free to vote. You can also vote as many times as you want on each idea. You, If you wanted to, you could vote at least once for each idea. You don't have to, but that is kind of the way the voting is set up to work. So Vote away, everybody. All right, we're just coming on the tail end of our timer here and we have over 120 votes. So I'm excited to see the outcome of this. All righty. So let's see what we got. It seems like a couple of us definitely got some, some votes here, but it seems like we have a four-way tie in the with the silver medal. We have the team building team engagement group. Um, and also our new worker, new hire training, a three-way tie actually between training and team engagement and team building. And our gold medal going to the icebreaker uh, category. So congrats to everybody. And let's now review our leaderboard. So as you can see here, Caroline is leading now the pack uh, with Lysandria, Kathy, Pam, and Julio in the respective second through fifth columns. So now you're also seeing our characters come back. For those of you that are accustomed with Kahoot, you'd know that in a, in a regular scoreboard, it just shows your name. Um, but now with the characters feature, it'll show your avatar here. So it's just another quick way to show your, your fun little guy or fun little person or fun little creature. Um, showing up on screen. But yes, the scoreboard is one of the integral pieces of Kahoot. It helps drive competition. It helps provide real-time recognition. And it's just a quick way to kind of um, amplify the engagement element uh, within a live session or an asynchronous session. So um, this is just a bit more of a deep dive on our driver at Kahoot, which is our question types. This is actually outdated because there's uh, a separate one uh, that was added alongside um, slider called drop pin. So um, there's actually 10 different question types. And I'll actually show you that in real time since this is a bit outdated. And we will um, take a break from our Kahoot here to go into a live window and actually walk through some of the things that we are here to talk about today. So if I did this correctly, you should be seeing my screen now. If I could get some, maybe uh, somebody confirming it for me in the chat, that'd be wonderful. Fantastic. Okay. So we are seeing the right screen and we're ready to move on. Fantastic. Okay. So now we are in the Kahoot profile. So first things first that I want to cover today is um, how to... We talked about, we're gonna essentially show you some best practices on how to 
shorten the time to creation. One of the quickest ways that you can kind of um, shorten the path to creation at Kahoot, especially since coming off of the coattails of our brainstorm activity, um, some of the uses are going to be to get to know your team or to create icebreaker Kahoots. Sometimes we don't have the time to dedicate maybe 30 minutes to sit down and create one from scratch. So in that respect, we do have a solution for you that comes through the Discover tab. When you have a paid enterprise license, you do have access to our Discover content library that allows you to essentially, I like to always use the analogy of picking something off the rack and just playing it as is. Uh, for most of you, everything on the Discover page will be accessible unless it's access pass content because that's a separate kind of add-on to a subscription and or content that is being sold by our creators. I mean, you can always opt to buy it, but the free content will come in the partner collection area and also down here in our curated, our monthly curated cahoots. Uh, as you can see here, as long as it doesn't say access pass like this one here, it's free for you to play. So like, for example, I'm going to choose the get to know everybody Kahoot that is here displayed for you in the top picks for business. So when you click on it, it shows you a preview of that Kahoot. So some notable things to always look for here is, first of all, it's named aptly get to know everyone icebreaker game. Very straightforward. It tell, it's telling you what it does. It's a step above a template because it's fully finished. So if, if you've been here before, you also know that Kahoot provides you templates that you can then tailor for specific scenarios. In this case, you're looking at a fully realized Kahoot, right? So it starts off with a slide saying, let's get to know everybody. And then it gives you um, a word cloud, essentially saying, you know, something I'd like to do in my free time is... And that's the prompt. And now, of course, your audience would then respond using the word cloud mechanism that we used earlier today. Um, it's then followed by another word cloud saying, you know, my greatest strength is in the prompt versus uh, using word cloud. And as you can see, it, it continues following that pattern here. This one's a poll to learn more about somebody, whether they're a coffee person, a tea person and so on and so forth, right? A couple more word clouds, a couple more polls, and then finally a ending slide. So essentially, if you wanted to play this as is, um, you don't have to invest any time into adjusting it, modifying it. All you'd have to do if you review the preview here that I'm, that I'm showing on the right-hand side and you like it, you can then choose to then play the game live or assign it asynchronously. If you want to play it live, all you have to do is click start. This then brings you to the beginning panel where you can select if you want to play in a classic mode or a team mode. Um, and once you select the mode that you want to play, the game pin pops up and you're ready to start your live game. Uh, but yeah, essentially in that manner, you, would, you wouldn't need to modify anything. Now, let's say we come to the scenario where you like something just enough, but you want to tailor some of it, uh, maybe add in just a bit more flair, something that might take you like maybe five minutes to, to really kind of um, uh, personalize a bit more. We do have the option for you to do that. All you have to do is click on the three dot menu here and check if the Kahoot is duplicate duplicatable. And um, when you click on the duplicate button, it will then create a copy of that Kahoot for you that you can then rename to whatever you would like. So instead of this long winded um, duplicate of get to know somebody, you can just quickly name it. We like to call it internally a selfie Kahoot. Um, a lot of us that are onboarded tend to do one so that um, our peers can get to know us and we fill it, you know, with our own type of um, fun facts and stuff like that, which can be really, really fun. And we do have a template for that, actually, but not to get too off topic. Once you rename it, you can click done. And now this Kahoot is yours to modify and change to your heart's content. Um, let's say, for example, you don't like the opening slide because it's a little bit bland. You can say something like, uh, you know, welcome to um, our virtual mixer, for example. Let's just say, for example. And then down here, you can adjust the bottom and say, you know, get to know your peers and win some awesome prizes. 
let's say for example, this is just uh, an example. I mean, you don't have to have a price attached to your Kahoot, but just in that little span of time, all I had to do was change the, the headers and the context boxes. And now that pre-existing slide that came in has been modified to my liking and I can even preview it. And that would be, you know, if that's all I wanted to do and change, all I'd have to do is save it. And once again, that picked off the rack Kahoot is ready to go and be played with my team. Um, another thing you could do is you could remove questions you don't like by deleting them. Uh, if there's something that you feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't feel like this is applicable. Like, let's say the coffee or tea one. Maybe there's people who don't like caffeine at all or hot beverages. Um, you know, maybe we want to adjust it and say, maybe change it into, I don't know, let's say, for example, like a open-ended question and ask something like, um, what is your favorite literature trope, for example. So now this has changed from the coffee and tea to what is your favorite literature trope. And now your players have up to 250 characters to describe their favorite literature trope. So this is just a key example of how you can kind of adjust a picked off the rack Kahoot and really shorten your path to creation without having to sit there and think up prompts and embed the images yourself and and do all of this that would require you know just a bit more labor intensive and 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 time so from here you can you know even change like the background the themes uh we do have a suite of themes that are free uh, today i'm using the space one on our actual kahoot we have ones that are festive. I know that me and Zaina both made use of the Halloween ones pretty, pretty uh, uh, extensively during uh, the month of October. And this just essentially gives your Kahoot a background image. It also changes some of the accent colors, which can be nice um, and just gives it a bit more of a, you know, maybe festive feel. Or if it's something a bit more professional, you want to go with our professional um, themes here. Uh, we have some for, you know, everybody's liking, some more that are just like image based. I know technology tends to be one that's just very popular or even something a bit more like subtle, like the desert palette or the light palette. Um, but from here, once your Kahoot is kind of adjusted to your heart's content, you can click save and you're ready to go. However, I did want to showcase one feature here in creation. It, you would go to the add question button and we have this feature called the question bank. Uh, this question bank can be a lifesaver because essentially what it will allow you to do is to bring questions and slides from other Kahoots into the Kahoot that you're building. So this is a great way to not have to sit there and create it from scratch all over again. You can simply type in a keyword like what is, let's say, for example, I have some, some questions that start that way. And when you are on show all, it will show you um, user generated content. Uh, it'll show you the user that created it. You can also toggle to my library and that specifically filters um, through the questions that belong to you and that you've created in the past. So for example, I have this little emoji trivia. What movie is this, right? Maybe I want to add that in into my selfie Kahoot for my icebreaker game. Uh, when I click add it in, it automatically carries over and essentially it's asking, you know, what movie is this? The correct answer here being Lady and the Tramp. Also a couple of different um, spellings and, and um, uh, var like uh, variances of, of the actual proper response in the form of a type answer. And now we've brought in this completely formatted trivia question directly into our Kahoot. So I'm gonna click save now. And now our selfie Kahoot is ready to be played. We've made a couple of modifications like adjusting our welcome slide, removing a word cloud that seemed a bit redundant, uh, you know, modifying a poll into something a bit more hearty. And then finally, importing a question from a pre-existing Kahoot in the form of trivia on the what movie is this format. So that took us all in all maybe about five minutes, maybe without all of my talking in between. But yeah, that is one of the skills that we wanted to showcase for you today. In case you're not already leveraging Discover content and or the question bank, please know that those are there to help you 
uh, create things a bit more effectively. So from here, I know Zainab also wanted me to cover our courses feature, which is one of our more, um, I personally like to call it like our more advanced type of features because it kind of builds upon the idea of you knowing how to create cahoots already. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with courses, it is a tool that helps you mimic a more traditional learning path. And what that means is that standalone cahoots are like one-time experiences. You can play them once during like a live game. You can play it um, as an asynchronous or in this case as an assignment, which is our, our actual like name for it um, at Kahoot. And once that's played, there's a report generated, you assess your impacts, you assess your insights, and you're done. Uh, but sometimes we require a bit more of a lengthy process to really kind of fully saturate the knowledge aspect of a topic. In this case, I'm envisioning like, let's say new hire onboarding with something that came up during our brainstorm activity, right? You are using Kahoot to onboard new trainees or to uh, train people on a policy or a policy update. Courses can be a very useful tool for that specific um, type of scenario. So all in all, what this essentially does is, and I have a couple of tests here, I'll create one with you. When you create a course, you would select the create course option and it brings you to this blank canvas. It looks different than the Kahoot creator we were just in. It will give you a creator guide, which is nice, telling you to you know add a title, add an activity and set a cover image and add a description. You can feel free to follow along that checklist, but I'm just gonna kind of uh, go freehand and solo it right here. But um, let's say for example, this course is gonna be for new hire onboarding. So we'll just name it new hire onboarding. And then we'll also put November. So we know that it's for November new hires. Once we name it, the next thing that I would recommend is for you to assess, okay, what do I want in this course? Do I have my cahoots pre-built out already? Um, and I'm, am I going to include cahoots? I would say if you're creating a cahoot course, you at least want to have at least one cahoot in there as a best practice. Um, you also have the ability to upload documents like PDFs. And then most recently, the ability to also embed videos as modules. Um, that's kind of the bread and butter of our Kahoot courses is that each element or each activity, if you want to think of it that way, is a module um, that is to play that is to be played in sequence. So you can't move on from the Kahoot that I've added in here until you've fully interacted with it and participated and answered all the questions. Um, and same thing goes, if I embed a PDF, you won't be able to move on from that module until that PDF is read and then acknowledge that it's read. So this provides a lot of accountability for um, when we're looking at maybe assigning a remote training on a policy update or even for like self-study in regards to new hire onboarding. So enough talk here. Let's actually do it. So first things first is I'm going to add in a Kahoot. Let's say, for example... I'm going to add in this Kahoot 101 onboarding. Let's say that that's um, relevant to our, you know, new hire onboarding here. Makes sense. I'm going to click add Kahoot. And now that's one of the activities in there, right? It's a 22 question Kahoot um, and it will show me a preview of what's in there. Um, I can now click add another activity and I'm also going to add in a PDF. So let me just look for something that is accessible on my browser. That can perfect a getting started guide. Let's see if it's um if it populates. Might take a couple seconds. And then finally, in regards to a video, let's say I want to use something that's off of YouTube. I'll just search the keyword Kahoot. Also, you can just quickly embed a link if you already have it. Um, but I'm just gonna use the the search bar feature and type in Kahoot tutorial. So let's say for example, I wanna use um, how to create a Kahoot tutorial. Perfect. So now in just the span of about two minutes, I've created a three part um, course with um, each activity being a module. So now I gotta order the way that I want this to go. So first things first, so I wanna start off with my document, right? I wanna make them read the document first. So I'll drag this up. And then I want them to watch the video 
to reinforce what they just read. And then I want to wrap up with the actual Kahoot that has the questions and the knowledge check component. So as you can see, I've aligned them to follow document video Kahoot. Um, I can even adjust, you know, the, the video title here on the side. But once I've created that, right, the modules are done and I can click save. So now I have the also the option to set a start time and an end time. If I'm creating this on November 2nd, but my new hire onboarding isn't actually going to start until November 8th, I can adjust that here. And that will become accessible upon December 8th to through December or sorry, November 9th. Um, and that's also, you know, adjustable here. Second, you're able to also toggle on things like player identifier, which is a feature that is super key when you're looking to assess impacts and measure um, the learning component. Uh, essentially, it pairs up an email to a participant's display name or nickname, and you're able to see on the back end that, you know, Rockstar76 is actually just Dave from accounting and that that score belongs to that person. Additionally, as a best practice, I will say if you're using a course always use the, the play and sequence option unless it's not imperative. But most of the time I'm, I'm figuring if, you know, a uh, modular training um, aspect is important, you want it to be played in sequence to really get the maximum effect of that. And then uh, question timer also being toggled on. You do have the option to assign it asynchronously or even play a course live. We just did um, this uh, play a course live functionality in our Kahoot work meetup. So if you were at that, you probably saw that happen. This is just a way to be able to like package together different Kahoots in a long training format, uh, or like in this case, like a long webinar format, like we did at our Kahoot work meetup. There was about over, I think, initially 500 people that joined that webinar and different aspects of Kahoot were showcased. We started off with the with the Kahoot module. We went over the latest features. Um, we went over some like success stories. And then the next speaker would take over. And then they talked a little bit about our other brands like Actimo, Motimate, and each segment of the live course corresponded to what was happening in the webinar, which was nice. But let's say, for example, I'm going to assign it asynchronously. So now that I've created the course successfully, I can even change the display image if I needed to. I forgot about that. But um, I would go to see report. It tells me here the, the course starts in six days. I would go to the see report option. And to add my learners, I'll have a couple of ways to do that. Um, this is just telling you, hey, you can customize the invitation to your um, to your learners and uh, you can even send a test email to yourself. From here, you can either choose to import email addresses and or just type out the emails of the people that you want to add. If it's gonna be a bulk ad, I highly suggest for you to use the import email address option. And as a final best practice, if you're gonna build a course, make sure you're toggling off the add new learners to your organization if you have a Kahoot 360 Spirit plan type. This just avoids the, um, the aspect of inviting your participants to join your organization. Um, if that's the goal, by all means, leave it on. But 99% of the time, you're going to want to toggle this off. Once, you know, you send your invitation, and I'll show you here. I'm just going to, you know, type in my work email and send myself a course invitation. You click add. And now that learner is added here. Um, you'll be able to have real-time visibility over the progress bar and how, uh, where they are on the course journey. Um, if, you know, they're falling behind, you will be able to remind that individual that um, they still have a way to go to finish and complete the course. And then you'll also have the ability to remind everybody all at once if that's a bit more, you know, efficient. Um, when data starts to populate, and I'll pop over to, you know, um, an actual report to show you what that looks like. You'll be able to see things like, uh, that wasn't the right one to choose. Here we go. You'll be able to see things like uh, individuals who need a little bit of help, maybe players and their corresponding scores, the questions and the outcomes of each question. And you can always download that report as an Excel as well. So that being said, I think that 
that covers some of the best practices and feature showcase that we wanted to talk about today. So I'm going to toggle back so that we can wrap up the rest of our Kahoot. Um, I'm seeing a lot of notifications on chat, so I hope that um, Zainab is able to give you the insights that you're looking for. And let's go ahead and wrap it up. So now a slider question. It's one of our newer question types. Uh, how many question types does Kahoot offer? So on your devices now, you'll be able to swing uh, your, your slider over to what you think it might be, and then we'll reveal the correct answer in a bit. And I'm just rereading through some of the chat. Um, thank you so much, Zena. There's a lot of good questions here. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, I forgot to cover the importing, but yes, you can definitely import your own PowerPoint slides and PDFs into Kahoot itself to make things a bit more easier. And I like to say, you know, working smarter, not harder in terms of creating. But the correct answer was in fact 10. We have 10 question types available as of today. Um, those were the ones that we were seeing earlier, like word cloud, poll, type answer, um, quiz, true and false, drop pin, open-ended brainstorm. And I think I'm missing two puzzle and slider. Yeah. But six of you got it absolutely correct. And that shook up our leaderboard a little bit. Caroline's staying in first place and our climber of 12 places. Hello. But Kathy, Lisa, Donna, and Megs made it up on the board just a little bit higher. So now for a quiz type question, completely irrelevant to what we're talking about, but it is just a way for us to showcase our traditional quiz type question. What is this character's name? You may know them from popular, you know, um, pop culture references and or a very famous Netflix show. Um, but if you don't know, just guess. You, you are not penalized for guessing wrong. And the answer was 11. So something like this, right? It's like a bit more like a pop culture, you like a ubiquitous topic. Um, I will say when it comes to Kahoot and gaining points and really trying to beat out your, your other colleagues, speed and accuracy is kind of the recipe to success. So the faster you answer and the correct answer gets you more points. But we do have things like double points to continue keep keeping the stakes kind of high and keeping everybody on the same playing field. Um, so yeah, and this booted Megs up to fourth place and now Shell being the highest climber. Another quiz type question, which friend char uh, friend's character hates Thanksgiving? So we like to use questions like this to showcase that you can also embed images and GIFs as your answer choices, which is a very nice visual way of kind of spicing up the dynamic within a Kahoot. Um, we do have integrations with YouTube, Vimeo, and Giphy that allow you to just quickly search up a keyword and then pull directly from those sites on the Kahoot platform itself without the need to have to download something to your upload it to um, the Kahoot that you're trying to make. But the correct answer was actually Chandler. Apparently Chandler is the friend's character that hates Thanksgiving. Uh, but it seems like most of you selected Ross, which, which is interesting. So yeah, now it makes more sense to me. Ross seems to hate a lot of things. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely very in, very much in this character. Um, but we have about nine minutes left, and we are at the point in our in our um, call and and webinar, more like webinar. I don't know why I said call. My my mind is stuck from earlier in some of the meetings that I had. I think, but um, 
yeah, we want to open the the kind of floor to you all to ask any remaining questions. Maybe if you need me to showcase something um, on the live uh, view or the live demo view, I can definitely do that. But please feel free to use this time to ask any lingering questions. Um, maybe give any feedback in the chat. What would you, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What would you like to know more about? Okay. Oh, okay. So Kim asks, if constructing a class and you want to integrate Kahoot, where is the best place to start? Great question, Kim. So there are a couple of routes that you can take. I see it. Um, if you're looking to construct like a course, like the one we were talking about earlier today, I'd say the best place to start when you're looking to create kind of like a modular learning path um, in, in the course functionality would be to create the assets that you need inside of it first, whether that's a Kahoot or a PDF. If it's going to be very Kahoot heavy, I will say spend time first devising those Kahoots because those need to be finalized before being added into a course. Now, if the question is, you know, how do I begin creating a Kahoot for a class? Um, there's a couple of thing, ways that you can do that. You can do that by following the route of what we discussed today and, you know, looking on your Discover tab um, and finding something that is relevant that you want to just modify. Um, I actually didn't cover that you can also search up keywords here. So like, let's say if sales training is what you're looking to create. You can always use um, other user generated content here and this search bar kind of like a browser to view what's popular, what's been created in the past with keywords like sales training and um, do the same, follow the same process that we did earlier with the discover example. Another way that you can create a Kahoot um, and kind of get that process started is to go to our template library and review all of the different use cases that we have, um, you know, handy for you here. Each um, template has a different structure. Um, it's not fully finished. Like you, you wouldn't be able to just pluck a template off of here and then play it like you would from something on the Discover tab, but you would be able to edit it in the same way and kind of tailor it and modify it a bit more um, than something that's fully kind of realized, like something on the Discover tab. And if the process is to just fully create something from scratch, you would just open a blank Kahoot and here you would have all of your question types accessible to you, of course, depending on the type of plan that you have uh, purchased. And um, also your slide functionality lives here where you can create slides from scratch on the platform or just simply import um, a pre-existing deck, whether that's a PowerPoint presentation or a Google Slides deck or even a PDF. So those are some of my tips on how to kind of get started on the process of creation. And yes, uh, how did I get to the templates? Great question, I'll do that one more time. You would go to the create button. From here, you would click Kahoot. And when you click Kahoot, it opens up the dialog box that shows you all the wonderful templates we have handy for you. And um, yeah, of course, no problem, Kim. So, so Kwan, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I'm so, so sorry. We use Articulate to build out our trainings. I would love to be able to add this web link in the, into the courses and have the NH be able to do trainings, quizzes, videos all in one. That's interesting. Um, that's something that maybe Zainab and I might have to discuss on the back end about, because you can integrate Kahoot's because they generate a URL link into other platforms as long as yeah. you know the the embedding feature is accessible on on the separate plat platform. However, I don't think that as of now we have the ability for it to you know kind of work the other way where we embed things that we are not um, like partner with. Like let's say YouTube videos can be embedded in courses because we have that integration partnership already. Um, however, I know we are working on an API solution that's going to roll out very soon that should allow you to incorporate more of Kahoot into your existing, you know, LMS. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a good uh, question to bring up. And maybe Zainab and I can sit down and discuss it and see if we can get you 
um, some more information on how maybe that's possible or how that can be done. And if not directly in that manner, at least giving you um, from our perspective, how we can incorporate Kahoot into that. Yeah, just uh, adding just off the top of my head, adding something to that. Um, the best solution right now would be to take the embed link from Kahoot and mm-hmm. put it into Articulate. Yeah. Um, so it's still all in the same place. So if they're going to Articulate, watching a video or going through any training material, if you take that embed link and put it into um, Articulate, it functions as kind of a iframe. So it opens up within the same window. So that still gives you the experience of being in the same spot. Um, and then they can go through the course or the assignment that you've created uh, mm-hmm. within the same window. So it's it's pretty close to an integration, but technically not an integration. Um, but that should, well, looks like that <laughs> looks like that's awesome. So I'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but good questions, everybody. We appreciate it. So now uh, there's about three minutes left. I'll wrap up what we had left. Um, second to last slide here now that we've come this far how well do you feel like you know Kahoot now especially I'm excited to to see this because I know at the beginning of this um our our audience breakdown was a bit more on the seasoned end we did have some newbie folks and I hope that you enjoyed your time today definitely getting a crash course and diving into the deep end of Kahoot but um for my for my seasoned folks how did you feel about this particular session? Did you feel like you learned a little bit more, learned something you, you didn't know? Um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing what the outcome is. Okay, so we've had some uh, answers stop coming in, so I'm just going to skip the rest of the timer. And it seems like 71% of you say slightly better, and a good whopping 29% of you said a lot better. So that's good to see from us. At least we didn't have anybody say same as before the webinar, so that's always definitely a win in our book. And now finally, to end things off, our open-ended question type in full display, um, right one takeaway from today's session. This is one of the traditions that we'd love to have at the end of a lot of our cahoots. Um, it could be anything. It could be maybe like a, a question that lingers, a general feeling on how, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, maybe something cool that you thought, you know, was worth exploring a little bit more. Please feel free now to take some time to, to jot your feelings down. And one of the neat and unique things things about open-ended is that gives you the ability to highlight a keyword in your blurb to um, give it just a bit more emphasis and a bit more of a oomph to it. So I'll let you all collect your thoughts. All right, we have 11 answers. I'll give just about two more seconds to cross your T's and dot your I's. And let's review what we have. Kahoot is pretty awesome. Excited to explore how I I can use Kahoot in new trainings. Use pre-made Kahoots. You can change an existing Kahoot. Being able to know who actually participated instead of a hot personal banker for 20. Love that. Yeah, player identifier is going to be the, the go-to for that. Creating a course. Love the avatars. Can't wait to have my team use the avatars. Yeah, I think that that's going to be just a fun little way to shake things up. First time seeing some things um, Kahoot can do. So it's all new. That's that's very valid feedback. Um, learned a lot of new tricks and how to create a course. Amazing.
And now with that being said, we'll see you soon and happy Kahooting. And let's crown our Kahoot 101 webinar Wednesday champ for today. Megs in third place, respectively. Lisa in the silver spot, second place. And Caroline held strong at first place with our runner-ups, Kathiel and Donna. So congrats, guys. And look at the cute little avatars dancing. Congratulations. And yes, I cannot get over how adorable these avatars are. Yeah, that's super cute. Uh, there's one more question from Kim. She's asking if these are every Wednesday. These are every other Wednesday. And mm -hmm. uh, we do try to cover somewhat of different topics. Yeah, definitely. We try to keep it very generalized to, you know, provide basics for those that do come in as fresh eyes and also give some to our veterans in terms of, you know, um, new features and new, new updates that might pertain to what you can do. But yeah. Alrighty. Other than that, um, we would love to give you some time back. Actually, I stole two minutes of your time. So please feel free to um, go ahead and drop off if you're running late to something. But thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you at our next one. Thank you. Bye, Kathy. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Sohyun. Uh, bye, Lysandria. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Gregory. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a good one.